100, 100 real estate experts were part of a survey and they were asked, is the market going to crash? Are we in a housing bubble? What do you think they said? Because I, I've got it right here with me. And I want to share with you exactly what they said and also why their answers are what they answer. So bear with me on this one. I'm Tristan. I'm with Lab Code Agents out here in Los Angeles, Ventura County. I run a large real estate team. I'm an investor and I run the largest community of agents in the world, 150,000 of them. And if some of you are watching, hello. But let's dive into this because this survey was done. Let me pull this up. It was done by Pulse Pulse Enomics. That's what they're called. And here it is at a glance. And out of the 100 people that they surveyed, this is what it looks like. Is the housing market currently in a bubble? And 60% of them said no. And I'll tell you why they said no. By the way, they agree with me. If you've been watching, you know I've been telling you right now, as of today, there is no bubble. So you can can that. And 32% said yes. And 8% said, I'm not sure. I have no idea. I mean, what's the secret of life? I don't know. Probably don't ask them any questions. They have no clue. Now, if you dig into this and find out why they answered this, I'm going to stop sharing really quick and go back to you. There were two main reasons. Number one, and I'll show you, was inventory. And number two was, well, when you look at it, all of the lending practices that were happening in 2008, 2007, were no longer happening now. And I'm going to show you a graph for that as well. Now, once you start diving into this and you realize that there's a lot of understanding that needs to be done when it comes to the real estate market, you start seeing, oh, I got it. I understand. The market is just easing into what most people would call a more normal market. It's a little bit slower, right? Things are going to last longer and not sell within two weeks. By the way, I'm also going to show you what are the hot markets and which ones are not, so you can see the difference. But first, I wanna share with you another graph, and this one's by my friends over at Keeping Current Matters. They sourced it from NAR, that's the National Association of Realtors. It's a really great graph, and it shows you the impact of monthly housing inventory on home prices, but this is important because six months is what we typically say six months of inventory is what a normal market looks like right less than six months i'll read it to you less than six months sellers market home prices will depreciate between six to seven months that's neutral that's what i'm calling normal right and look there is no normal but that's neutral home prices will only appreciate with inflation more than seven months right buyer's market. That's when we start looking at, wait a second here, buyers are determining what things are selling for. Sellers are slashing their prices dramatically. Now we're not, we're not there yet, right? Will we get there? Well, some people are saying we'll probably get somewhere around uh, a middle neutral ground as early as next year, where we're going to have as much inventory as demand, but we'll see. I don't know. It's too early to tell. The one thing I can tell you then from the data that I have and the data I'm going to share with you here on YouTube, by the way, that's where I put up all the links that I'm sharing with you now. So you can read it too. This way you don't just leave it to chance or listen to something else and like, hey, where'd they get information from? I'm giving you this information. So use it. Now, let's dig into what National Association of Realtors just released, and that's existing home sales fell 3.4% in May. And remember, they're about a month behind off of everything that's happening. But it also tells you sale prices are past 400000 And if you watched my video, I think it was on Thursday or Friday, I show you exactly from Altos Research what that data is just one week behind. So you don't have to start looking at this older data. There was something right here that I do want to share with you that was really important. I highlighted it here, and it says right there, the Inventory of unsold existing homes rose to 1.16 million by the end of May, or this equivalent of, and this is why I brought up the months, 2.6 months of inventory at the current monthly sales price. So that's important to take a look at. We're going to go back now to this and be like, okay, wait a second. What did you tell me, Tristan? Less than six months is still a seller's market. 
and that's why prices are still going up, right? Between six to seven months, which they think we might reach next year based on inventory, right? And then more than seven months, who knows what happens end of 2023. But that's what we're talking about. See, when we're looking at data, it's important to take a look at these numbers because people just throw out stuff and they're like, well, well what does that mean? That's the real data. And that's what you have to calculate things by, right? So now let's dig into another piece to this because people are also wondering, well, Tristan, what, what's going to happen now in regards to foreclosures? Should we be worried about foreclosures? And let me just share with you, I've got inventory of homes, nothing like the last time, right? And then I'll go back to that one. Lending standards are tighter today. On Friday, go watch that video. I talked about foreclosures. I talked about how it's just the forbearance process was so much smoother than people thought that a lot of those people that were in forbearance got out of it. And those that were still not paying were very few in comparison. So here are the lending standards uh, and how they've gotten tighter since 2000. If you scroll to the bottom there, 2007, when the whole recession came in 2008, all of a sudden your volume of loans and billions with credit score less than 620. That's significantly less here. And that, that's probably where it evens out here as well. It may even be tighter here because a lot less people are applying, right? Because not everyone qualifies. It's an affordability issue as well. So now we go up to the top one. Let's talk about inventory because sometimes people overlook this and say, well, you know, inventory is one thing and affordability is something else. Well, let me tell you, if there aren't enough homes for the people that can afford it, we have a supply and demand issue. That's what it comes down to. So don't twist it around and say, hey, it's it's really an affordability issue. And I'm like, no, actually not right now. It's not because the amount of properties available for sale are still significantly less than the people that can afford them. This is why prices are still going up. So pay attention to those details. Now let's take a look at this one again. Inventory of homes, nothing like the last time. I mean, how many times am I going to tell you this time isn't like 2008 and a lot of you are still stuck because that's the only thing you can relate it to. It's different. A lot of different things. So here it is. Four years of housing crash leading up to it and after 8.9, 10.8, 9.7, 8.1 after, right? Four years of housing crash. Now the last four years, check that out on the right. That's the blue. 2019 through 2022. That is the monthly supply of existing homes for sale. How crazy is that? That's significantly less, right? Now you start seeing exactly why we have this challenge that we have. And now the news is saying, I mean, there's a great article that I'm going to go over tomorrow. Let me stop sharing this really quick. But a great article that's coming out tomorrow that came out today that I'm going over tomorrow shows that 30% of all properties that were purchased were purchased by investors, right? Accredited investors can be big, big companies or individual investors and turning them over and making them into Airbnbs or short term rentals. And now those are scaling back. So we're seeing a lot less investors purchase property as well. So there are a lot of nuances that we aren't talking about as to why the market skyrocketed and now why it's evening out. So pay attention to these things. I wanted to show you that so you understand where we're heading so far, right? And why things are happening the way they're happening. It's, it's just a supply and demand issue. Now, let me share with you one other thing here. Uh, two other things I'm going to share with you a really great quote that I read here it said inventory is nothing like the last time let me let me reduce my little window of my face so you can read it with me so inventory is nothing like the last time prices are rising because there's a healthy demand for home ownership at the same time there's a limited supply of homes for sale Odetta Kushi deputy chief economist of first American first American title uh, they have a lot of data says uh, the fundamentals driving house prices growth in the U.S. remain intact. The demand for homes continues to exceed the supply of homes for sale, which is keeping house prices growth high. And if you remember the video you watched with me where we heard the Fed talk about the whole uh, rising of the interest rates to uh, what is it, three quarters of a percent, I think it was the week before last, he said at the end, he said, hey, Home prices are probably still going to go up this year, which is nuts. 
So this starts explaining it to you. Now let's take a look at a great, great article that I got from Realtor.com and I'll put it up in the link on YouTube if you're on there, follow me. This is where homes are selling the fastest and where homes are selling also the slowest. And I love this article, it just came out today. It says homes, where homes are selling the fastest and it categorizes them on a little map and it goes into some detail right here. Manchester, New Hampshire. I've never been there, but it looks pretty. Uh, it looks great. It looks like a like little America. I like it. it might mean like Main Street in Disneyland. I like that. Uh, median list price, May 2022, 444. Days on market, eight and a half days. Damn. That's fast. Rally, North Carolina, nine days with a median list price of over what the median list price is across the nation. But 493, nine days on market. Whew. That's fast. Rochester, New York, 10 days. It's tied with Denver, Colorado, which is super hot. Look at their price point, 695,000, right? Now, Burlington, Vermont, 11 days on market, 439,000. Now let's get to where homes take the longest to sell. Now, I, I, I looked at this ahead of time, but think about where, where would these be? Any of these cities that I saw the lowest the slowest to sell. I, I I didn't know a lot of these places, but take a look and I'll put up the link. I loved this one. Probably want to share it with some friends. Where homes take the longest to sell. Here we go. Number one, I don't know Huma, but I'm taking a look at Huma. It looks like it's an older city there. Medium price, 284,000. 58 days on market. But check this out where it says, where it says the number is down significantly from the median 79 days. It was slower and it got faster, which was crazy to me, right? Now take a look at this. I don't even know, is it, is it, okay, everybody listening in, is it Utica or Utica? I don't wanna screw that whole thing up. Help me out, is it Utica or Utica, New York? But the price is insanely low. 182,000. Remember that the median national price right now is, I thought, 440,000 around there. 55 days on the market. Iowa City, 319,000. 51 days on the market. That looks kind of quaint and nice as well. Charleston, West Virginia, 151,000. 50 days on the market. Man, all these areas look like they should. They should be just jumping off price points they're at. Salisbury, Maryland, at four, 499, 49 days. And that's a wrap for that one. But I, I wanted to show you the differences. I wanted to show you how some areas are just going like that. And some areas are lasting a little bit longer. I'm in LA, Ventura County. So Los Angeles, Ventura County. And we're at about 30 days or so. It's slowed down significantly. When homes were flying off the shelves over here in about seven to ten, seven to ten days, now they're taking about a month. So we did see a little bit of a slowdown, but homes are still selling. That's the thing. So I think what's going to happen, and I keep telling you this, is you have to keep an eye on where mortgage rates go and what actually happens in September, October, when we head into what's normally in a housing market. What's normally a downtime, a little bit slower. Do we come out of that? Do we keep going up after? What happens? That's what you need to be paying attention to. I will see you tomorrow because I'm going to go into this whole great article on showing you where investors were purchasing, how they came in, how they drove this market up, and now how they're stepping out. So we'll see how that goes. Have an awesome Monday. I think it's Monday. And thanks for watching.